Late Latin is the scholarly name for the written in Latin of late antiquity. The English dictionary definition of late Latin dates this period from the 3rd to the 6th centuries AD, extending in the Iberian Peninsula of southwestern Europe to the 7th century. This somewhat ambiguously defined period fits between Classical Latin and Medieval Latin, although there is no scholarly consensus about exactly when Classical Latin should end, nor exactly when Medieval Latin should begin. Late Latin is characterized by an identifiable style, being a written language. Late Latin is not identifiable with Vulgar Latin. The latter during those centuries served as Proto-Romance, a reconstructed ancestor of the Romance languages. Although Late Latin reflects an upsurge of the use of Vulgar Latin vocabulary and constructs, it remains to a large extent classical in overall features, depending on the author. Some are more literary and classical, some more inclined to the vernacular, nor is late Latin identical to Christian or patristic Latin, the theological writings of the early Christian fathers. While Christian writings are considered a subset of late Latin, pagans wrote much late Latin, especially in the early part of the period. Late Latin formed during a time when mercenaries from non-Latin-speaking peoples on the borders of the empire were being subsumed and assimilated in large numbers and the rise of Christianity was introducing a heightened divisiveness in Roman society creating more of a need for a standard means of communicating between different socio-economic registers and widely separated regions of the sprawling empire. A new and more universal speech evolved from the main elements, classical Latin, Christian Latin, which featured Serma humilis, ordinary speech, in which the people were to be addressed, and all the various dialects of vulgar Latin. The linguist Antoine Mate said, Sans que l'aspect exterior de la langue che soit beaucoup modifié, le latin est devenu au cause de l'époque imperiale une langue nouvelle, without the exterior appearance of the language being much modified. Latin became in the course of the imperial epoch a new language, and servant en quelque sorte sort of de lingua franca un grand empire. Le latin attendu a che simplifier, a garde suite. Cequi elevate de banal, serving as some sort of lingua franca to a large empire, Latin tended to become simpler, to keep above all what it had of the ordinary, philological constructs. Late and post-classical Latin Neither late Latin nor late antiquity in modern terms or concepts, their origin remains obscure, neither are they ancient. A notice in Harper's new monthly magazine of the publication of Andrews Freund's Lexicon of the Latin Language in 1850, mentions that the dictionary divides Latin into anti-classic quite classic, Ciceronian, Augustan, post-Augustan and post-classic or late Latin, which indicates the term already was in professional use by English classicists in the early 19th century. Instances of English vernacular use of the term may also be found from the 18th century. The term late antiquity meaning post-classical and pre-medieval had currency in English well before then. Imperial Latin Wilhelm Sigismund Tufel's first edition of History of Roman Literature defined an early period, the Golden Age, the Silver Age and then goes on to define other ages first by dynasty and then by century. In subsequent editions he subsumed all periods under three headings. The first period, the second period and the third period, the Imperial Age, subdivided into the Silver Age, the second century, and centuries three to six together, which was a recognition of late Latin, as he sometimes refers to the writings of those times as late. Imperial Latin went on into English literature, Fowler's History of Roman Literature, mentions it in 1903. There are, however, insoluble problems with the beginning and end of Imperial Latin. 
Politically the excluded Augustan period is the paradigm of imperiality, and yet the style cannot be bundled with either the Silver Age or with late Latin. Moreover, in 6th century Italy, the Roman Empire no longer existed, the rule of Gothic kings prevailed. Subsequently the term imperial Latin was dropped by historians of Latin literature, although it may be seen in marginal works. The Silver Age was extended a century and the final four centuries represent Late Latin, Christian, Patristic, Vulgate and Ancient Latin Low Latin Low Latin is a vague and often pejorative term that might refer to any post-classical Latin from Late Latin through Renaissance Latin depending on the author. Its origins are obscure but the Latin expression media a infama Latinita sprang into public notice in 1678 in the title of a glossary by Charles du Fresne, Sieur du Cange. The multi-volume set had many editions and expansions by other authors subsequently. The title varies somewhat, most commonly used was Glossarium Mediae infama Latinitatis. It has been translated by expressions of widely different meanings. The uncertainty is understanding what media, middle, and infima, low, mean in this context. The media is securely connected to medieval Latin by Kanji's own terminology expounded in the prefacia, such as scriptors mediatitus. Writers of the Middle Age, Kanji's glossary takes words from authors ranging from the Christian period to the Renaissance dipping into the classical period if a word originated there. Either media a infima latinitas refers to one age, which must be the Middle Age covering the entire post-classical range, or it refers to two consecutive periods, infima latinitas and media latinitas. Both interpretations have their adherents. In the former case the infima appears extraneous, it recognizes the corruption of the corrupter Latinate as Kanj said his glossary covered. The two-period case postulates a second unity of style, infima Latinitas, translated into English as low Latin. Kanj in the glossarial part of his glossary identifies some words as being used by Purius Latinatitis scriptors, such as Cicero. He has already said in the preface that he rejects the ages scheme used by some. Golden Age, Silver Age, Brass Age, Iron Age. A second category of the inferiorized Latinatitis scriptors, such as Apuleius. The third and main category of the infima Latinatitis scriptors, who must be post-classical, that is, late Latin, unless they are also medieval. His failure to state which authors are low leaves the issue unresolved. He does however give some idea of the source of his infima, which is a classical word, lowest, of which the comparative degree is inferior, lower. In the preface he opposes the style of the scriptors aevi inferiorized to the elegantis sermones, elegant speech, the high and low styles of Latinitas defined by the classical authors. Apparently Kanj was basing his low style on Surma Humilis, the simplified speech devised by late Latin Christian writers to address the ordinary people. Humilis means low, of the ground. Instead they preferred a humbler style lower in correctness, so that they might better deliver the gospel to the vulgus or common people. Low Latin in this view is the Latin of the two periods in which it has the least degree of purity or as most corrupt. By corrupt Dukanja only meant that the language had resorted to non-classical vocabulary and constructs from various sources, but his choice of words was unfortunate. It allowed the corruption to extend to other aspects of society, providing fuel for the fires of religious and class conflict. Low Latin passed from the heirs of the Italian Renaissance to the new philologists of the northern and Germanic climes where it became a different concept. In Britain Gildas view that Britain felt the Anglo-Saxons because it was morally slack was already well known to the scholarly world. The Northern Protestants now worked a role reversal. If the language was corrupt, it must be symptomatic of a corrupt society, which indubitably led to a decline and fall, as Edward Gibbon put it. 
of imperial society. Writers taking this line relied heavily on the scandalous behavior of the Julio-Claudian dynasty and the bad emperors reported by Tacitus and other writers and later by the secret history of Procopius, who hated his royal employers to such a degree that he could not contain himself about their real methods and way of life any longer. They, however, spoke elegant Latin. The Protestants changed the scenario to fit their ideology that the Church needed to be purified of corruption. For example, Baron Bielfeld, a Prussian officer and comparative Latinist, characterized the low in low Latin, which he saw as medieval Latin, as follows. The elements of universal erudition, containing an analytical abridgment of the sciences, Polite arts and bell letterers, low Latin, tends to be muddled with vulgar Latin, late Latin and medieval Latin and has unfortunate extensions of meaning into the sphere of socio-economics. It has gone out of use by the mainstream philologists of Latin literature. A few writers on the periphery still mention it, influenced by the dictionaries and classic writings of former times. As to full scheme of the Golden Age and the Silver Age is the generally accepted one. The canonical list of authors should begin just after the end of the Silver Age, regardless of what third century event is cited as the beginning, otherwise there are gaps. Tufel gave the end of the Silver Age as the death of Hadrian at 138 AD. His classification of styles left a century between that event and his final period, the 3rd-6th centuries BC, which was in other systems being considered late antiquity, starting with Charles Thomas Crutwell's A History of Roman Literature from the earliest period to the death of Marcus Aurelius which first came out in 1877. English literary historians have included the spare century in silver Latin. Accordingly, the latter ends with the death of the last of the five good emperors in 180 AD. Other authors use other events, such as the end of the Nervan Antonine dynasty in 192 AD or later events. A good round date of 200 AD gives a canonical list of nearly no overlap. The transition between late Latin and medieval Latin is by no means as easy to assess. Taking that media a infima Latinitas was one style. Mantello in a recent handbook asserts of the Latin used in the Middle Ages, that it is, here interpreted broadly to include late antiquity and, therefore to extend from c. AD 200 to 1500, although recognizing late antiquity, he does not recognize late Latin. It did not exist and medieval Latin began directly at 200 BC. In this view all differences from classical Latin are bundled as though they evolved through a single continuous style. Of the two style interpretations the late Latin period of Eric Auerbach and others is one of the shortest. In the first half of the 6th century, which witnessed the beginning and end of Ostrogoth rule in Italy, Latin literature becomes medieval. Boethius was the last ancient author and the role of Rome as the center of the ancient world, as communis patria, was at an end, in essence. The lingua franca of classical vestiges was doomed when Italy was overrun by the Goths, but its momentum carried it one lifetime further, ending with the death of Boethius in 524 AD. Not everyone agrees that the lingua franca came to an end with the fall of Rome, but argue that it continued and became the language of the reinstituted Carolingian Empire under Charlemagne. Toward the end of his reign his administration conducted some language reforms. The first recognition that late Latin could not be understood by the masses and therefore was not a lingua franca was the decrees of 813 AD by synods. At Mainz, Reims tours that from then on preaching was to be done in a language more understandable to the people, which was stated by Tours Canon 17 as Rustica Romana Lingua, identified as Proto-Romance, the descendant of Vulgar Latin. Late Latin as defined by Mate was at an end, however, Pucci's Harrington's medieval Latin sets the end of late Latin when romance began to be written. Latin retired to the cloister, and Romanitas lived on only in the fiction of the Holy Roman Empire. The final date given by those authors is 900 AD. 
Through the death of Boethius Domitius Ulpianus, jurist, imperial officer, Julius Paulus Prudentius Amuse, jurist, imperial officer, Elius Marchanus, jurist, Arenius Modestinus, jurist, Censorinus, historian, essayist, Quintus Gargilius Martialis, horticulturalist, pharmacologist, Gaius Assanius Quadratus, historian, Quintus Septimius Florence Tertullianus, the father of Latin Christianity, polemicist against heresy, Thasius Caius Elias Cyprianus, converted rhetorician, bishop of Carthage, martyr, saint, novationist, theologian, rival pope, excommunicant, Quintus Serenus Samonicus, scholar, educator, Commodianus, poet, Christian educator, Lucius Celius Firminus Lactantius, converted rhetorician, scholar, Christian apologist and educator, Aminus Marcellinus, soldier, imperial officer, historian, Claudius Claudianus, court poet, Gaius Julius Solanus, topical writer, Nonius Marcellus, topical writer, Marcus Aurelius Olympius Nemesinus, poet, Aquila Romanus, rhetorician, Eumenius of Autuns, educator, Elius Festus Aphthonius, grammarian, Chalcidius, translator, Gaius Marius Victorinus, converted philosopher, Arnobius of Sicca, Christian apologist, Constantine I, first Christian emperor, Nazarius, rhetorician, educator, Gaius Julius Victor, rhetorician, Gaius Vettius Aquilinus Juvencus, Christian poet, Nonius Marcellus, grammarian, lexicographer, Julius Firmicus Maternus, converted advocate, pagan and Christian writer, Elius Donatus, grammarian, rhetorician, educator, Palladius, Saint, First Bishop of Ireland, Sextus Aurelius Victor, Imperial Officer, Historian, Eutropius, Imperial Officer, Historian, Emilius Magnus Arboreus, Poet, Educator, Friend of the Imperial Family, Decimius Magnus Ozonius, Poet, Rhetorician, Educator, Friend of the Imperial Family, Claudius Maimatinus, imperial officer, panegyricist, embezzler, hilarious, converted Neoplatonist, theologian, bishop of Poitiers, saint, Ambrosius, theologian, bishop of Milan, saint, Lucifer, theologian, bishop of Sardinia, Priscillianus, theologian, first person executed as a heretic, Flavius Sosipater Charisius, grammarian, Diomedes Grammaticus, grammarian, Posthumius Rufus Festus Avinus, imperial officer, poet, translator, Prishanus Caesariensis, grammarian, 